This is the Tallahassee Business Podcast. Over the next few weeks, our mission is to bring you interviews with key leaders and community members with information you can use while we work together to navigate the impacts of the COVID-19 coronavirus. The Tallahassee Business Podcast is presented by the 223 Agency, a digital relations firm. Hey there, Tallahassee, Jay Revel here. We are delighted to have you listening in to a special edition of the Tallahassee Business Podcast. Uh, We are living in some strange and unique times. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, I think you could certainly say that uh, it's it's bordering on a a crisis uh, in our country right now, a healthcare crisis with the continuing spread and development of the COVID-19 coronavirus, um, which means that we here at the Chamber of Commerce want to bring you the most relevant and timely information we possibly can. We want to tell you stories uh, of our member businesses and what they're doing and how that can help you as a business to get through this challenging time. Um, And when we think of the word crisis, there is no one that I know better uh, to have a conversation with than our good friend, Ron Sachs, founder of Sachs Media Group. Uh, Ron, we are delighted to have you on the podcast with us today. Well, I'm grateful to be here with you and Sarah at a safe distance from each other. That's right. Yeah, we're, we're, we're appropriately distanced. And, um, you know, folks, if you've ever had the chance to be around Ron Sachs, I can tell you a, a couple of things that you should uh, you you will clearly recognize is that uh, Ron is a caring, uh, competent leader who uh, always puts his community, his employees, uh, and people here at, at organizations that he's involved with, like the chamber, first and foremost. Uh, I don't know too many people who uh, are so quick to reach out in challenging times and just try to help people. Uh, get it right, as I would say. Uh, Ron, I, 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 I've always looked up to you. I think a lot of people do. And um, when we were thinking of different folks we might could bring on as a series in this special series of editions uh, with our podcast, you're the first name that came to mind. So thanks again for being with well, us. Well, thank you. And I'm always honored to be here to do anything to help our chamber and our community. Maybe for starters, Ron, one, one, just for those who maybe don't know, tell us a little bit about your company and, and the kind of work that you do. Well, I'm a Florida native who's lived in Tallahassee 30 years because I read that once it's uh, one of the 10 best places in the country to raise a family, and that was absolutely right 30 years ago, and I raised a, a beautiful family with three daughters here, but also 24 years ago started a business here. So I've, I've learned that this is not just the capital for quality of life and raising a family, but also for starting a business and really having just a, a terrific life. I wouldn't trade these 30 years or hopefully the next 30 for anything. But we're absolutely in a very challenging time. Our company is an integrated marketing and communications company, does public relations, public affairs, crisis, anything involving media. But this is a time unlike anything most of us who are alive have ever experienced and requires lots of good tips for what we need to do personally, professionally, in our own families and the family of our community to stay safe. Knowing that, Ron, what are some of the immediate things that come to mind that you you would recommend that companies should be considering right now? Well, at our company, uh, just this week, we started a voluntary but highly encouraged work from home policy. So probably 80% of our staff here in Tallahassee and in our other offices in Orlando and South Florida are working from home. With Wi-Fi, which is certainly not jeopardized at all during this coronavirus threat, um, we're connected. We can do anything. We can hit the whole world with what we have to do for clients and projects from anywhere in the world, essentially, as long as we're connected. Our priority uh, for our own staff would be what it is when we're not in a coronavirus threat. It is to stay safe, everyone, stay productive, and stay connected. So we found a way to do that uh, from remote locations, uh, from home. Some of us are at the office on the business side of the business. But those priorities of stay safe, stay productive, stay connected, I think are guide words for all of us in public, private, and not-for-profit sectors. Jumping right in, Ron, earlier you sent us a great article that was written, and we'll surely link that in the show notes to this, but it was kind of addressing the challenges that people who aren't typically used to working remote are finding themselves facing. Do you have any 
words of advice or maybe just experience of kind of still accomplishing what you need to accomplish when you're not in the same building with some of your colleagues? Oh, certainly. We, we trust our staff to be hardworking and productive. It doesn't mean I expect them to be grinding it out from 8.30 to 5.30 from home. But we're connected through platforms uh, like Zoom or Slack, and uh, we are in real-time communications about who's doing what for whom so we can track our projects and deadlines and not miss a beat even though we're not in the same shared space. We're not in the same shared space for obvious reasons, but I, I think it's uh, worth going to the, the larger societal issue right now that we are in this unprecedented time, uncharted territory. None of us has ever lived through a period of time where movie theaters are shut, Broadway is shut, restaurants are shutting, uh, communities are, are closing down, neighborhoods are closing down, people are working from home, uh, cruise lines and airlines are, are being grounded uh, or limiting their, their service. And uh, uh, frankly, it challenges all of us to stay positive, stay safe, and be there for each other, uh, not just for ourselves. So I think we have a rare opportunity in this crisis to use it as a moment in time for our country and our community to pull together as never before, as we would before, during, and after a hurricane. This is a storm of a different nature, but in some ways much more threatening because it's not going away anytime soon, apparently. And that's exactly something that I wanted to talk to you and hear your opinion about because we have been through here in Florida hurricanes. My family was affected by Hurricane Michael, and I'm in no way comparing them because they can't be compared. But um, even with a hurricane, you know, the panic in your chest when you're preparing for it feels similar to what people may be feeling right now. But with a hurricane or other natural disaster, there's an end point when you know you're going to see the effects, you're going to be able to start recovering at that point. How do you recommend that employees, business owners, just society really kind of prepare for the marathon that we don't really know when it's going to finish. What do you do now to make sure you make it through the whole thing? Well, we've all seen a thousand varieties of the <laughs> stay calm sign mm -hmm. with a second line encouraging something. I think that is the, the Bible first right now. Stay calm and be productive, be safe, be helpful to others, uh, be wise. I think, uh, you know, when you're a parent, your children look to you for guidance. They take cues from your behavior. If you seem stressed, they'll be more stressed than they should be. So too for employers and managers, if your employees see you stressing out about how to handle this, it sends those stress waves down the line and it doesn't help. So I think it's really important uh, to approach this in a serious way, but to try and keep some balance in our lives. So people stuck at home, working from home, or just assigned to be home, and their kids are there, school's out maybe for the rest of the school year. Um, take that time to reunite with your kids. Get involved in some positive activities. You're not prevented for the time being from going out in the fresh air and inhaling some of our beautiful pollen here, <laughs> which is safe enough. But enjoy our wonderful parks and, and trailways, which are not heavily populated. But I think uh, we need to encourage one another and not be down, but ride this out together. We will get to the other side of this, um, maybe later than sooner, but we need to be in this for the long haul. When you... Ron, when you talk about, you know, how to communicate, um, I think that goes two ways, right? There's internal in your organization, in your family, too, like you were just speaking to, and then there's external. How are you um, sharing, what messages are you sharing in the world, and how are you doing it? Uh, obviously, you've got lots of clients uh, in those spaces. What are, what are some suggestions or, or considerations on that front of how people should be communicating both internally and externally? Uh, with their companies and organizations right now? Well, that's a great question, Jay. I think for, for folks in business or, or folks in any sphere, government or not-for-profits, make a list, it's probably a short list, of the multiple audiences you have. So the people you work with every day, your own staffs, uh, whether they're in one location or multiple locations. Your clients or customers, that's another list. If you have a database list of them, emails, um, this is the time to use them. And then there's the, the, the larger public and special audiences. So there should be variations on the theme here, but a set of united messages that are sent out. Last week, we sent out a personal email to every single client we have and former clients and prospective clients to say, hey, we know this is a serious time for you. We're really good at messaging to multiple audiences. If you need help, 
reach out. We're up and running and available to help you. And we got some really nice responses back from that. I would say I have seen a terrific uh, reflection of organizations in the public, private, not-for-profit sector communicating early, often, and on a regular basis. And that's critical in this time. We can't just be waiting for a daily briefing from the federal government or a daily briefing from the governor. And I would say one thing that's very heartening about the situation is we want our president to be effective and successful for our all. This is above and beyond politics. No matter what happens in November, we need our top leader to be there for us now, and we'll be there for him and for the whole federal government. So, too, uh, whoever you voted for, you know, two years ago, we want Governor DeSantis to be effective and successful and to listen to their updates. But so, too, we're fortunate to live into a, in a community uh, with a great city government, a great county government, a great school system, and they are doing a terrific job communicating to all of us, to their multiple audiences, separately and together. And I would say the fact that I'm sitting here doing this broadcast with you, I'm so proud to be a business person in this community. Our chamber is always there with the right message at the right time to the right audience, as reflected by what you're doing here today and what you've done before this and what you'll do after it. I think uh, one of the most interesting things that I've read in the last 24 hours is a survey that shows that employees at almost any workplace trust their bosses to look out for them, trust their bosses to give them news they can use, information that can help keep them and their families safer. That was surprising to me, but in some ways not so surprising because the place you show up to every, wor every work day where we spend more time with our colleagues than we do with our families is the place where you develop a work family sense. And so it seems a natural thing. What it also does is create a positive pressure point for employers in all sectors to embrace that responsibility to look out for their loved ones, the loved ones at work. No, I think that's a very well said um, series of points there, Ron. Um, you know, I, I think there's an opportunity in this moment, too, where you'll see organizations um, get creative, get innovative, yeah. uh, come up with some new ideas for how to do what they do and apply it in, uh, in new fashions. Um, I'm sure your company, your talented team, who we've had plenty of opportunities to interact with over the years, are racking their brains. I know our team's racking their brains on some things. Any uh, any ways to, to maybe trigger some uh, uh, creative thinking in this time? Well, I, I think what you're angling toward is, uh, if it's not creative thinking, it is uh, that balance of attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, if we were all embracing a, a blue period here of darkness, because this is a common threat to our way of life, across the globe. I mean, as tragic as this is, as, as big a crisis as this is, and likely to grow bigger in this country, in this community, and across the world, the other side of that is it creates this opportunity for us to be unified in purpose beyond any differences that we have, religious, political, or geographic, uh, ethnic, and, and country. Uh, we're all in this together across the globe. Uh, we don't want anyone to get sick or die here in this community or anywhere across the country or the world. So we're in this shared moment that could be a lengthy moment, and we need to take advantage of it to stay on the positive and find ways to find those lighthearted moments, to still enjoy our families, nature, God, uh, and appreciate what we have, even though it's challenged and in some respects threatened right now. We will get through this, but this is our opportunity, each of us, to be patriots in our own way by what we do to take care of ourselves and those we care about at our families, at work and in our community. And uh, we don't get that calling to patriotism at this level too often, but we have it now. You felt the same kind of surge opportunity after the 9-11 tragedy. And as horrible as that was, um, as much as we worried that more was coming, that was it. Uh, 2,000 plus Americans killed on one day in one savage moment, but it transported all of us into this united patriotic opportunity to look past our differences to our common ground and the common ground of caring about our country, our family, our community. This is an even bigger opportunity for us to do that. That was so beautiful and well said. And I think that, you know, some of the things that you see on the internet can kind of become too much because you're inundated with bad news daily. But 
I love some of the things that we have seen um, from our neighbors here in Tallahassee, also from across the world, people who are stuck in their homes and, and finding light in these moments. So I think that that is just absolutely something that we should consider is, you know, spreading the the joy in Tallahassee. We still live in a beautiful place and we still live in a great place to work. Our business community is thriving. Absolutely. Do you have, uh, as I'm sitting here, I think about the many chamber members. Our businesses kind of range from sole proprietors all the way up to p- businesses with hundreds of employees. For some of the businesses that have fewer employees or maybe kind of out on their own who may be thinking that they're unsure how to proceed, you know, should we kind of consider closing? Should we work remotely? What would you kind of, what would your advice to them be to kind of navigate these waters right now? I think they have to err on the side of what the experts are telling us. Uh, You know, you don't have a choice if you're a bar owner in New York right now. And I think the governor, uh, Governor DeSantis has announced the closing of bars and nightclubs here. Uh, That's gonna hurt some businesses. What would hurt more is ignoring that smart advice from people in science, health, and in government who are erring on the side of keeping us all safe. What we can do uh, is look at that list of local businesses here that are challenged to stay healthy by this crisis. And when it comes to restaurants, for example, most of us are not going to be going to restaurants in crowded spaces anymore. But I, I like Bite Squad and these other apps where you can get home delivery during football season. I'm a big Bite Squad uh, <laughs> customer, and uh, it's, uh, there's no sports that are going to be causing that now. But I think we can keep these uh, restaurants afloat somewhat by basically endorsing their product and services in a different way. There's takeout opportunities. There's gift certificates we could buy in advance to help them. And uh, for their own employees, um, they're going to find ways, I think, to, to, to keep them solid. I think uh, encouraging news from the government uh, are some loans, emergency bridge loans, that the governor announced today through the Department of Economic Opportunity, up to $50,000 interest-free. I'm not the expert on that, but $50,000 interest-free to help a small business that's got some cash issues could be very helpful, the thing that keeps some businesses in business. Ron, um you are always a pleasure to be able to have a great conversation with. This is uh, no exception. Uh, I think you've provided some wonderful insight. Um, for those who want to learn more about your company and some of the great stuff that y'all are putting out, where should we send folks? Well, I, I'm not going to really promote our company right now. We're Sax Media. That's our website, saxmedia.com. But I, I think the better thing is to uh, access uh, multiple sources of information every day, the Tallahassee Chamber, Florida Chamber, our city of Tallahassee, Leon County government, Leon County schools, um, the two hospitals and CHP. Uh, there's not a single resource you should just rely on. Uh, we have the time to rely on multiple ones. Find some nugget of helpful information on any of them. Stay calm, love your family, love your pets. I think the most upbeat thing I've seen this week was a cartoon where a dog is standing next to its owner that has one of those lampshade collar type things around the the human's neck and the dog is saying i told you not to touch your face (laughs) i saw that that's funny (laughs) so let's just stay calm stay united and and get through this together uh there will be better times ahead Uh, it's going to test our courage it's going to test our patience it's going to test our uh, test our willingness to sacrifice Uh, but we can do this it's it's what we're about and we're going to test ourselves right now by what we do in the days and weeks ahead That's very well said. Thanks for being with us, Ron. We appreciate all you do for our wonderful community and uh, wish you, your team, and family all the best during these trying times. Well, let's let's wash our hands multiple times, wipe down services, uh, keep safe distances. But uh, one last thing I'd like to say, if it's okay. Please. We have technology today that's not going to be jeopardized by this crisis, and it is the thing that can keep us together even as we're apart. So pick up the phone. Do a Skypey call or just a phone call to grandma or mom or dad or a brother you've been out of touch with for a while or an aunt you're mad at. This is the time to kind of let those walls down and reconnect, and I think it's going to feel good to do that. I think that's a great point to end on. Ron, thanks again for being with us. We appreciate you. Uh, Folks, if you're listening, we can't tell you how much we appreciate your continued support of our Greater Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce. As Ron mentioned 
we do have uh, resources available on our website at www.talchamber.com. That's talchamber.com where you can find all the latest news and information about how the COVID-19 coronavirus is affecting our business community and resources available to you to help you and your business get through this. Uh, we will be bringing you more episodes very similar to this, uh, diving into a range of subjects that are relevant and timely uh, during uh, these challenging moments. Thanks again for listening. We appreciate you uh, more than you'll ever know. Uh, we'll talk to you again real soon.